Hi, this is Reverb Audio, and I'm answering Nick's question about uh, bypassing uh, capacitors and why we need to bypass them and what is the optimal value to bypass. So here, this is a perfect question for power supplies because it also depends what is the quality of the capacitor. Like if you have a nice film capacitor, you do not need to bypass it and you can often do more harm to the sound than uh, have benefits. But in the case of these big electrolytic capacitors, bypassing has really obvious advantages. And why is that? That's because capacitors are flat surfaces. So when you have two metallic surfaces uh, isolated by insulators, then when one plate is charged, then the charge will jump to the other plate. And that's how capacitors work. But then the more capacitance you have, you need, you need bigger sheets. And uh, to have it at a reasonable size, we need to roll them up. So basically, uh, these capacitors are rolls of these double layers and thousands and thousands of rolls. Now the problem is when you roll something up, rolling up, what do we get? A rolled up metallic uh, uh, piece is an inductor. So basically the higher your capacitance is, the higher the inductance that uh, capacitor also have. And as, as we look at the frequency response uh, from of a capacitor, at high enough frequencies, it stops being a capacitor and it becomes an inductor. So when you read in the data sheets that the capacitor has inductance, then that's what it is and that's where it comes from. And that's why we want to bypass the capacitor that uh, with a much smaller value capacitor because that smaller value will help out and extend the frequency response, the high frequency range of that capacitor and uh, keep it capacitive for uh, higher frequencies. And, and the value to bypass is 1%. So this is a 12 millifarad capacitor. So we would need 120 microfarads. So, so 12,000 uh, microfarads, and then we bypass with uh, uh, 120 microfarads. And you don't need to be very specific about it. Anything between 100 and uh, 500 microfarads uh, uh, will work to bypass. So it doesn't need to be exactly 1%. Just whatever you have in your toolbox, uh, something in the order of a uh, uh, one percent or a few percents and uh, that's one thing so a, a bypassing capacitor will help your big capacitor to stay capacitive it at more ex extreme frequency ranges uh, and as you guessed this is uh, quite important for digital devices because they work their their chips their ICs they work in the megahertz range so in that high frequency range uh, high megahertz range megahertz we also already have the inductive uh, components uh, messing around with the capacitor so if we add that 120 microfarad bypass it will keep it more stable in that region where your deck chip actually works uh, also one more reason to bypass is because uh, a smaller value capacitor can be made uh, to uh, be of higher quality, to be a better capacitor, and also uh, it charges faster. So if you have a smaller plate, smaller metallic plate inside your capacitor that charges and discharges much faster than a huge plate. So basically, we are also speeding up the big capacitor by adding a small cap. And Nick asked, uh, asked if we could uh, bypass instead with uh, film capacitors. Now, let's see. If we want to have the same value, like a 120 microfarad, I have a 130 microfarad film capacitor. It's this big. 
So it's much, much bigger than the bypassing cap. It's much bigger actually than the cap that we are trying to bypass. It's practically as big as, bigger than two of the original capacitors. So there's no way to fit four of these into the chassis. I can fit maybe two of them because the power transformer will be this big. It will come out up to here. And I'm not sure if the height, uh, it's, it's also a bit higher than the thing. So, so we, we, we run into issues with height as well. And um, so that's why we off do not, we just stick to bypassing with adaptorytics because uh, films are just way too big uh, to physically fit in the chassis. And another reason why to keep to lithics here, even though they are poorer quality than films, is that uh, if you bypass with a capacitor that is very different from the main capacitor that you are bypassing, is that you can make the make it uh, quite schizophrenic because the behavior of these two capacitors are very very different from each other. So a film cap works totally different from an electrolytic cap, and. Uh, and and the end result can be that at higher frequencies it behaves like like a film cap and and mid-range low frequencies you have an electrolytic sound and and that in the beginning you will hear as if you have really nice high frequency extension but the mid-range and bass just sucks and and it sounds like a completely different unit producing the low frequencies versus high frequencies um, so I hope this uh, helps uh, for everyone to have a better imagination of why capacitors can be bypassed or when do we need to bypass them. Uh, this is just a, a five minute video, so obviously I am not uh, going to describe every aspect of bypassing in five minutes. That would take probably several days long video to uh, go deeper into the subject. But um, here we go. So I hope this was useful. So if you want to uh, speed up your big power supply capacitors and also have a better top end extension, uh, then just bypass with a value around 1%, 1%, 2%, 3%. That will work very nicely. And use a higher quality electrolytic capacitor. It will fit inside and will mix with the sound of the main uh, electrolytic cap quite nicely. Thank you, please like, subscribe, bye bye.